Greetings, everybody. My name is Doug Patterson, the Senior Minister of Smithfield United Church of Christ, located in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I welcome you to our weekly video worship service. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's start as we always do. May the peace of Christ be with you. In just a few short days, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Can you imagine that? We're going to be doing a special edition of our virtual worship here next week. And included in that video, I want to include videos submitted by you of people giving thanks. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to turn the camera on yourself and just issue one very brief word of gratitude. And it might go something like this. I am grateful for each and every single one of you. That's all. It can't be longer than six seconds. That's a very, very short period of time. You don't have time to introduce yourself. In fact, do not do anything at all like that. Just simply say, I or we. I mean, if you want to have your spouse or your family members or somebody with you, say, I or we are grateful for this. And if you give me your name and your name or names of people, people in the video, and along with where you live, I'm going to put that on the screen as well. Now, these videos, as I say, are very brief, and please send them to me at the end of this video today when we quote-unquote roll the credits. I'm going to give you the email address where you can send those videos. I hope that you will do it. For at least the last 40 years, Smithfield United Church of Christ has ministered to the needs of the homeless in the city of Pittsburgh and surrounding areas by providing shelter in cold times and in times of need. First of all, we offered this through Bethlehem Haven, which some of you will remember was a shelter for homeless women. When they outgrew our facility and moved to another facility up on Watson Street, we worked with con in conjunction with Allegheny County and Mercy Hospital through Operation Safety Net to provide the cold weather shelter here at our church. In the last few years, upwards of 125 people have found shelter all during the winter months in our church. Some of you will remember that last year at this time, we had a very critical issue on our hands when it was discovered that our church was no longer up to snuff in terms of the facilities and primarily in regards to uh, fire safety. So to make our shelter habitable and up to code, we worked with architects and came up with a plan to totally renovate the downstairs, to provide new bathrooms, new facilities, to make sure that everything was safe. Primarily, those plans included the installation of sprinkler systems and a state-of-the-art 
fire alarm system, which is located throughout the entire building. The cost for this is enormous, $440,000. Through the gracious gifts of estates and trusts and agencies in the Pittsburgh area, this money was raised in just under two weeks. So work has been ongoing for several months downstairs. And even though it's going to put a rush, I think everything's going to come in right on time to allow us to open the shelter this coming Sunday, November the 15th. Now, some of you may ask, in terms of the COVID uh, pandemic, what's going to happen down there? Well, first of all, instead of 125, the capacity has been limited to 51, no more than 51, and men only uh, this year. Protocols have been put in place for screening, for health care, safety precautions like masks and distancing are absolutely required. And so it's going to be a, a, an adjustment time for, for all of us uh, to see how this shelter will operate. Hopefully, other shelters throughout the area will be able to handle the overflow that we normally take at our church. So I just wanted to give you a little update, and I hope that you will pray for the staff that oversees the shelter downstairs every night over the next many months, and I hope you will pray for the homeless, God's children in our midst. Let us pray. During this time of prayer, we open our hearts and minds to hear your message for us on this beautiful day, God of all, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Here we are, faithful people of all ages, races, acknowledging our diverse identities and turning our hearts to you to hear divine words of wisdom and peace. Scripture promises us that salvation is at hand for those who fear God and that God's glory may dwell in their land. We wait for the day when steadfast love and faithfulness work together in our midst and righteousness look down on us from the sky. May we receive from you goodness and mercy. Let our land yield its increase. May we experience righteousness going before you, making a path for your work in our lives. The number of people affected by COVID-19 is increasing. Many lives have been affected by rain and flooding, fires, as well as conflicts and unrest in our midst. Our essential workers carry on the work and give their best to care and protect the most vulnerable people in our community. Our church experience is limited to online and recorded worship services that we can access from our homes. In our isolation and time away from our loved ones and families, we take time to meditate and receive your strength and direction in our lives. We pray for our nation eager to find our stability and security in the middle of a pandemic as well as a presidential election. Give us patience and a deep respect for our democracy. As we wait and hear every voice, count every vote, till we join as one country to tackle the issues that are, lie ahead of us. Let the love for our country and our wish for a bright future heal our wounds and help us to move forward towards cooperation and unity. We pray for all those who are seeking your healing presence in their lives, all those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones, all our unemployed, underemployed, all our young children and college students missing out on their social interaction and recreational opportunities. Gracious God, we seek your comfort and peace, wisdom and love, as we remember the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. you don't know me, I'm Alex Rosanek. I've been a member for about two years at Smithfield, and it's my pleasure today to be reading today's scripture. It is the parable of talents found in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were such a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew you did that, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was mine own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into outer darkness, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of our Lord. One of the people I follow with great regularity on Facebook and social media is uh, a musician from Sweden. Her name is Gunhild Carling. Now, I have been watching her on video for the last couple of years. I hope sometime to be able to see her in person. But she is such a multi-talented, multi-faceted performer. She plays, I don't know how many interests, how many instruments. She plays the trumpet, the trombone, the saxophone, the clarinet. She plays the flute. She plays the harmonica. She plays a harp. She plays the piano. She plays the drums. The list goes on and on and on. Sometimes she plays two trumpets at a time. Sometimes she will play three trumpets at a time. Can you imagine it? Oh, and she also plays the bagpipes. But here's the thing. She does it with such exuberance and such charisma and such excitement. It's genuine. It's authentic. And I just love to watch her. She has taken all the talents, all the talents that God has given to her and multiplied them many times over and given them back literally as a gift to the universe. This in essence, is what I want to talk to you today about, is how we take the things that God has given to us and use them to build our faith. Now, the scripture lesson today, uh, as you heard Alex read it just a little bit ago, the scripture lesson today is a parable that Jesus uh, told. A parable, as you know, is a, is a little story with a meaning attached to it. And the story is of a man who had some servants. This is biblical language, you understand. Who had some servants and he went away on a trip. But before he left, he gave one of the servants $5,000. I'm going to put it into our monetary terms. $5,000. To another one, he gave $2,000. And to the third, he gave $1,000. When he returned from his trip, he called the three men in and he said, I want you to give me an account of what you have done with the money I entrusted to your care. The first one said, I took your $5,000 and I immediately went and I invested it and I doubled my money and $10,000 and here it is and he gave it to him. Well done, well done, the landowner said. Come on in, let's have a little party. He said to the second one, what have you done? He said, well, sir, you gave me $2,000 and I, like my friend, took it, invested it, worked with it, and I made another $2,000. And so here is a total of $4,000. I'm going to give it to you, which he did. And the owner was very, very happy. And he said, thank you so much. This is awesome. You come in, you get to go to the party too. And he said to the third man, what have you done? And he said, you gave me $1,000. And he said, I, I really quite didn't know what to do with it. I was afraid to take any risks. I was afraid to take a chance. I was afraid to do anything. So this is what I did. I went out and dug a hole in my backyard. I buried it. And then when I heard that you were coming home, I went out, I unburied it. And so here it is, a thousand dollars. I kept it safe. And the owner said, you got to be kidding me. These other two guys, they took what they had, they multiplied it and now they get to go to the party. But you said, this $1,000, I'm going to take it away from you and I give it to these guys. They get to divvy it up and they get to use it. But you, you don't get to come to the party. Now, why is this such an important parable? Well, I think for a, a couple of reasons. One, to me, it's a, it's a parable about faith. Faith our place in the universe, our relationship to God, our relationship to others. What are the components of faith? Well, they're probably numerous, but I want to talk about two of them here today. One is multiplication. It's the fact that God has given to you and to me gifts, talents, resources, no matter how meager they might be. And the expectation that God has, you see, and it's not a negative expectation, 
It's a positive expectation. This should be fun. This should be fulfilling. This this should be make a character building kind of exercise for us. What God has given to us, you see, is to be multiplied. And when it's multiplied, it's given back to the universe. It's given to the people around us. And in this way, if other people participate in this, if other people do these kinds of things, all of us get to enjoy life a lot more. Now, some people will interpret this parable to say that, well, the, the message is that to whom a lot has been given, then they deserve more. And to those who don't have very much, those poor peons, you know, we don't expect anything at all from them. No, it could have been reversed. The parable could be reversed, in my mind at least. And the one who had $1,000, if he came back with $2,000, he would have been a good and faithful servant. You see, it just, it just doesn't matter. The whole thing is about multiplication. And we see this in the life and ministry of Jesus, do we not? The most famous of Jesus' miracles, the only one that's recorded in all four Gospels, was the feeding of the 5,000. And in this, in this miracle, Jesus had 5,000 people before him. It said 5,000 men, which also meant that there were a lot of women and children there, so there were probably 10,000, 15,000 people there, whatever. And Jesus said, uh, you know, we're going to feed all these people. And the disciples said, it's not possible. Jesus said, go see, what, go see what they have. Go see what we have available to us. They came back and they said, well, all we have are a couple of these little fish and we have a few loaves of bread, that's all. Notice that Jesus did not say, well, with these fish, only two of them, and with some bread, he said, that's enough for the for you 12 of you guys and me. That, that, that's enough for all 13 of us. We can have a little picnic and then, you know, the rest of the people, they can go feed themselves. No, he did not say that. He did not do that. Jesus said, whatever we have, you see, we're going to multiply it and we're going to give it away. This is what this parable is all about. It's about multiplication. It's about imitating what Jesus lived out in his life, taking whatever you have, multiplying it, and using it for the good and the benefit of people in the world. That's the first thing, multiplication. The second thing regarding faith that I want to talk to you about today is this, is about light. The Gospels say, and the Scriptures indeed say, that Jesus is the light of the world. Okay, that's a great image, and it's something that's very rich and deep in meaning, and I'm not taking away from that at all. But if that's all we think about Jesus, the light of the world, what it leads to is the idolization of Jesus. It leads to the worship of Jesus as in say, uh, you know, I believe in Jesus, you see. I believe in this light of the world. Therefore, it makes me part of the in crowd. No, this is what, this is what most churches, this is what most of us fall into, is this misunderstanding of what the light of the world is all about. As Jesus multiplied gifts, multiplied all the good things, Jesus also said, and this is what we often ignore, in fact, ignore the vast majority of the time. Jesus said this, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And just as I'm pointing into the camera right now and pointing to you, you can imagine that Jesus is pointing to me and is pointing to each and every single one of you viewing this right now and saying, you are the light of the world. What are the ramifications of this? Indeed, Jesus said to his disciples, all these good things that I did, you're going to do these things and even more multiplication. You're going to do that. You see, to recognize, not just see Jesus, but to recognize Christ all around us, in, in creation, in other people, this is what draws us together. This is what makes 
it so meaningful to be a Christian because it means that we have the God-given capacity to bring light into the world. And how do we do this? We do this with the gifts that God has given to us. And we not only just store them away, we multiply them and we use them. Again, let me say, you might say to yourself, you might put yourself down all the time. Poor, pitiful me. I haven't been given much. I, I don't have great talents. I don't have this. I don't have that. You may not. I certainly don't have the gifts that Gunhild Carling has. But whatever you have, whatever I have, you multiply it. And believe me, when you begin the, the, the whole process of multiplication, your life changes. You, you, find, you find fulfillment in it. It's exciting. It's fun. It's, it, it sparkles. You understand what I'm talking about? So, the components of faith, as I understand them, particularly in this, in this parable, are multiplication and light. And whatever is given to you, the expectation is that you're going to do something with it for the benefit of the world. All people. All people. That's kind of the lead in to what I want to say here really today. You know that we are in the midst of an exploding pandemic. At the beginning of this, when we got to a certain point and said, well, there are 25,000 diagnosed cases in the nation. How horrible is that? It, this is like off the charts right now. Yesterday, 170,000 new cases in the nation. The death rate is going up exponentially. This is not only a national crisis, this is a worldwide crisis. And what are we going to do about it? Now, I know, and I can say with confidence, that I'm doing my part, and I'm trying to do it better each day. What is my part? I wear a mask. I wear a mask every place I go. I keep myself distant from other people. I wash my hands with regularity. I'm so concerned about this, not for my own health, but for the health of my wife, my children, my grandchildren, and for you. And for you. I'm doing my part. Thank God that we have physicians and nurses and medical personnel in this nation today who are giving everything they have everything they have. They go in and they face circumstances that none of us can even really imagine. They are on the front battle lines of this pandemic. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. I don't know how much more we can expect out of them. They are taking their gifts and their tools and they're multiplying them as best they can to help people and to prevent people from getting sick and dying. This is what I really want to say to you today. This is what I want to say to our elected officials, our politicians. We, as American citizens, have given you our votes. We have given you the offices in which you sit. We have given you power. We have given you authority. We have given you resources. We have given you so much. And I, for one, am tired of the infantile, childish, greedy, power-grabbing behavior of our politicians. I'm really, really disappointed because I expect more. We expect more. We, as Americans, expect more. Now, you may say, Doug, that's a pretty harsh statement, but I believe it thoroughly. 
The parable says, take what you have, multiply it, and use it to the best of your ability. I expect that our elected officials will take this to heart. And I'm going to hold them to task, and I hope that you will too. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that your day will uh, be healthy and happy. And may the peace of Christ truly be with you.